I'm developing a pretty simple device to control stepper drivers using an ESP32. As you know, stepper drivers like 5 volts and ESP32 likes 3.3 volts. So we need to do some voltage translation. I found this pretty awesome looking Texas Instruments integrated circuit. Uh, it does voltage translation back and forth and you don't even need to specify the direction. So you can have your pin work as an input or an output. It also offers ESD protection with 8 channels. So with just two of those ICs I would have all my needs covered. So I gave it a try. Here is my board produced by GLCPCB with SMD assembly and you can see here is the ESP32 S3 module and here are the lines, data lines coming to the voltage translation circuits. And they go through ferrite beads just to dampen any EMI noise potentially from outside of the board and then it goes to the terminals. And the software I have there right now is just oscillating every pin as an output with a constant frequency. We see that 5 volt reference looks good. This square wave looking very good. Here's something really weird is happening. It's only going to half the 5 volt voltage. A good square wave. It's good, but you see sometimes it drops to that same 2.6 volt over here. Why is it happening? I don't know. Here everything looks good. So as you see, this one channel is doing really bad. And this channel is doing something really weird. And on other channels everything is doing pretty good. And here is also something that I wanted to show you. Now this pin used to work okay, but now it has gone crazy. Here also something just a little weird happened there. No, now it's also gone crazy. Here everything looks good. Yeah, so as you see, quite a lot of really weird issues going on here. I was thinking maybe it's just this one board, maybe it was damaged in some way. But then I tested the second board from the batch of 5 and it had exactly the same problems. Here everything is doing well, again well, and again. And this is just 5 volts, but this is our Z-step pin. It's not doing well at all. It's only going to half the required voltage. And the other pin is just all over the place. If we look at the board layout, we can see that the problematic pins are these two. Is there something special about them? I wouldn't really say. These two ICs are not laid out as recommended by the manufacturer. The datasheet I was using from the distributor didn't have the recommended layout there. I agree that I'm probably using them wrong, not so terribly wrong that I would expect such results. Here is how the manufacturer recommends it to be laid out. And of course, my layout is a little different. My capacitors are a little further away. I have this 5 volt line running under the chip which doesn't seem like a huge deal to me because there isn't really any noise on that line. But I guess it did make the difference because these two channels are broken. We can see that on those legs everything is doing well. There is just 25 Hz of signal um, that is in the appropriate range. The sixth leg has the same thing going on. But as you see on these two pins on the other side of the chip completely unexpected things happen. And looking at my schematics, it's not ideal, but all the required components for the voltage translation are there, including capacitors and the voltage supply is correct and the overall enable is pulled down to the ground and then brought high when I need the translator to start working. And I don't see anything special at all about the two problematic lines, Z-step and z dear. So they are located here in the middle of the chip. I have a suspicion that maybe the ferrite beads are playing a role here, but after just desoldering them and replacing with a piece of wire, nothing has changed, so I don't think it's about them. And uh, perhaps it's not made for this particular application, and I'm probably using it wrong. But for comparison, here is a different project, or more like previous iteration of this exact project, done again with ESP32. 
and you can see beautiful resistors up here. Anyway, here instead of voltage translation IC, I used just the basic MOSFETs with some resistors to do the bidirectional voltage translation. No problems here. So what I have done for this design is removed those voltage translators and put a bunch of MOSFETs with resistors down there. And uh, of course I also added ESD protection and those same ferrite beads. Now I just need to wait another month for the new PCBs to arrive.